Hey folks, I'm just gonna give this a minute for folks to pop on. Um, I'm here with Carissa. Hi! We're in the office and um, I've been thinking about this Me Too thing for a really long time um, as a survivor of sexual violence. Um, I think about it a lot long before it became a Me Too. But there's something that's been happening in this public dialogue and some things that I've been seeing, especially like commentary in um, posts in social media, like, well, why didn't they say anything? Why are they just coming out now? Why didn't they do anything? Well, if it was really a problem, why didn't they push them away or say something? And I'm seeing a lot of that, which is really making me think that people don't understand how defense responses work. And then yesterday in the office, we actually had this discussion because one of our staff got into an argument with someone over um, this exact thing. And it really crystallized for me about what I needed to say around this because we've been bantering, like, should we come on? Should we talk about this? Should we not? What should we say? What hasn't been said already? And yesterday it got really clear. So I came in the office this morning and I'm like, hey, Carissa, let's do it. <laughs> Um, and those who know me know this stuff's not, my, it's hard for me. So, but this is important and we need to talk about it. So the, the deal is about, um, what is it? What is a defense response? Like when something's scary to you or it's offensive or something and how do you respond? Right. And I think most people recognize fight flight. I think when I teach, you know, class after class, work with people, people recognize fight flight. Maybe you should even like say, um, I feel like this is one that people will end up sharing. So like maybe you should even explain like fight flight, like on a basic level, like what, like what that is, okay. you know, no. even like if it can be done quickly. No, no, fair enough. Yeah. Right. Something threatens you and there's a sense of I'm going to fight to protect or I'm going to run and flee. And that these are biological responses. They're not something you think about. You know, if I'm, one of my famous uh, examples that I often use, if I'm like walking across the street in the crosswalk, in the right, and I look up and I see someone driving and I see that they're on their phone, it's like an automatic response. I'm like jumping, right? I didn't think, hey, you know, quadriceps, muscles engage, heart beat fast. I didn't think all of that. I just re reacted and that's flight. And so I think people understand that because it's kind of common, right? Uh, we may think we have a little more control over it than we do, but it's common. We understand that. The thing to remember is, is that that particular response, just let me back up. When stress responses have been studied in humans, they have overwhelmingly used male subjects. Overwhelmingly used male subjects. Like up until 1985, only 17% of studies were done on women. Okay? And the reason why women were excluded from these studies is because women have menstrual cycles and our hormones have rhythms and that was seen as abnormal and confusing the picture. So let's not get be confused by half the population's normal hormonal cycles. So what we know about stress responses, right, and even up to 2000, only 35% of studies were um, done on women, right? So what we know about stress responses are male stress responses. And so when someone says, why didn't somebody push back? Why didn't somebody fight? Why didn't somebody run away? Why didn't somebody, right, get up and get big and get, right? Because they see that as the normative stress response, but the science was all done on men. Okay, so number one. Then if we go in a little deeper and we see that humans, as all animals, have varied stress responses, right? How, let's say you got a little, uh, I don't know, a little bunny, right, on the prairie, right? How is it going to respond to an owl coming to swoop down versus a snake in the grass? It needs to have different responses in order to survive. Right? You're going to use a different, that bunny's going to use a different response to each of them. And humans are no different. And so the range of responses we now realize, flight flight is one. But there's another one. Often women in this culture in North America are socialized to tend and befriend. 
right? So when we're a little threatened, we like try to make friends, right? We try to make friends we, or we tend. But there's even another one called appeasement. And I think this one really strikes at the heart of this conversation. Women in this culture, in fact, many marginalized people, people of color, when there's a dominance hierarchy, appeasement, right, is when you make yourself a little smaller, you put your head down, you avert your gaze, right? You say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, okay. Inside, you're scared, you don't want to, there's, there's some kind of threat, but what we do is we make ourselves small. We appease for the dominance, right? Because bucking that dominance hierarchy is gonna be more dangerous. We see that in families, we see it in organizations, we see it in the larger culture. Women in North America have been acculturated to appease. So when somebody, your, your boss flirts, flirts, right? He just think it's jovial, we're like, oh no. If I say something, I'm deeply uncomfortable, but if I say something, I'm gonna lose my job. So I'm just gonna put my head down because I need to pay my rent and I don't wanna threaten anything and I just put my down, head down and I do it. And that's the appeasement and we do it and we do it and we do it so it looks normal and it's not seen as a defense response. It is a defense response as much as fight flight. Even more severe than when it's, than appeasement is freeze. When it's really serious, our bodies, take over and freeze. So it's not a choice, right? I remember uh, working with a, a young gang involved youth when I explained this and he said, and he was tough. And he said, when I explained what freeze was and how it was automatic, he said, is that why I didn't do anything when that gun was pulled on me? Because he had huge shame that his body had betrayed him and he wasn't able to be tough. And when he understood it was a biological response, you could see the shame kind of drain away. Same thing happens in sexual assault. Freeze. Our bodies make the determination that's the best way we're going to survive. It is a defense response. It's not doing nothing. It's an active defense response. It's a choice, a physical choice of passivity to save our lives. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to add is we'll say, well, these are grown people. They're not little kids. They can blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't know what happened when we, they were little kids. And in fact, how our bodies make the choice of which of these defense responses to use in a situation, it depends on our history. If when we were small, freezing or staying small and appeasing worked, we, our body remembers that and will pull that up and it automatic, we're in, we're in that situation. How many of you, for example, are in an argument, right? And you kind of just like get foggy or kind of blank out what you want to say. And then as soon as you're out of the argument, you're like, oh, I would say this and this and this. Why didn't I say all that? You froze a little bit or maybe you appeased. You didn't want to push it too much, right? So I think all of us can relate that this is a, 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 there's a spectrum of responses. We don't know how we would react in someone else's shoes. We weren't there. We don't have their history. We don't have their biology. They're all, um, these are all defense responses. So when somebody around a Me Too, right, the latest one, uh, Matt Lauer, I think, right? And they said, well, why now? Or Russell Simmons, why now? Sometimes it can take a long time for someone to feel safe enough to come out of their defense response as women, women of color, we live in those defense responses because it's not so safe for us to buck the system because when it does, dangerous things happen. So that's the, the nugget of what I want to say about Me Too and how people are responding to Me Too is to um, remember that there's a bunch of human defense responses from tend and befriend to appease to freeze to fight flight and that those are chosen by men and women depending on our history, our socialization, and it's really not up to us to judge someone else's defense response. That's it.